Today we're in History Ridge, Brazil, Indiana. This, this is, is Indiana, Indiana Townies. Aaron, did you know how Brazil became the county seat of Clay County? I have no idea. Well, it used to be Bowling Green, Indiana, was the county seat of Clay County. And in 1875, Brazil was kind of at its peak economically with the brick and coal industry. And so a group of revolutionaries decided to overthrow the county seat <laughs> in Bowling Green and take it for their own and move it to Brazil. It's kind of a little piece of Indiana history that gets lost in the in the books. But over a hundred people died in the war of Bowling Green. <laughs> Some good people. But Brazil came out victorious and got the county seat of Clay County. What <laughs> What were those um, revolutionists called? Do you remember? Did they have a... I think the <laughs> Brazil Billies. <laughs> Aaron, did you know Brazil, Indiana is actually named after the country of Brazil? It was kind of a very popular history topic back in the 1800s. And the founders of Brazil decided to call the town Brazil, Indiana. There's actually a gift at the park from the government of Brazil. <laughs> they given to them in 1950. It's a beautiful fountain, which we'll visit later. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm serious. No, it was not. No. We shall see. Did you know Brazil, Indiana is the boyhood home of Orville Redenbacher? I knew that. <laughs> did you know he graduated from Brazil High School? Nope. He did. Did you know he was in the FFA there and won all kinds of state and national awards? I didn't know that. He was. Went to Purdue University and made his um, <clears throat> fortune in fertilizer. And then after that, got into the popcorn business. <laughs> That's a, that sounds made up. It's not. How do you go from fertilizer business to... Well, that's where he made his money, was in the fertilizer, fertilizer business. And moved then went, eh, I think it's time to move on to popcorn. Moved to Valparaiso and said, huh, I'm bored with this fertilizer. I'm bored <laughs> with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start popping some corn. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'm thinking about popcorn now. I'm hungry. Can we stop somewhere and grab something real quick? Please. Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh, what a day. Are you happy we stopped? Yes, thank you. I feel much better. Oh, this Big Mac sounds good. What the hell? Yeah. Horrible. We're here at Lynn's Pharmacy in Brazil, Indiana. Lynn's has been here for a long time. It's got a soda fountain. We're going to go in, talk to the owner, make a soda.
So Aaron and I are here with Lynn Hostetler, and he is the owner of Lynn's Pharmacy and Soda Shop in Brazil, Indiana. Lynn, how long have you had the business? I bought it in the fall of 1970. 1970? Okay, and how long has the soda shop been here? Uh, I put it in it's probably in the 90s. It was a shoe store in this location for a while, and when I bought the building starting out, I, the rent from the shoe store was welcome in addition to the revenue stream. So after they closed and went out, then I put my dreams in the soda fountain. What made you want to go into pharmaceuticals? Well, when I was a little kid, uh, I lived in South of Clay City, so we went down to Linton to uh, buy our groceries. So once, you know, three or four times a year, I could talk to my parents. My sister and I could talk to my parents and take this to the movie. She down to a couple of or something. And we'd go to the movie, come out of the movie, and go next door to a drugstore at a soda fountain. And we're allowed either a Coke or a uh, Sunday of some kind, a couple dips of ice cream. So the gentleman running the pharmacy was always smiling, always happy. And I thought, boy, I'd like to be like that guy. Good. And so what got you into the soda, uh, having a soda shop in the pharmacy? Was it your boyhood experience? Uh, boyhood experience, yeah, because uh, that's kind of a lost art. And so we put it in and we do it the same way they did back in the 20s. Uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, they uh, used this little red box, said go pull on it, pull the lever down, and they would make a coat. So when I put this in, it's been a dream just to, and I, it's been rewarding because I walked in there one evening and the fountain had closed and there's a gentleman sitting here about the same table we are, just sitting here looking around. And I said, can I help you? He says, no, I'm just reminiscing. He grew up with cancers. And there was a pharmacy there that was very similar to what we have here. And he was just reminiscing and just enjoying himself, just sitting here. Well, thank you, Lynn. We appreciate it. So Lynn's explaining to us here how to make a soda at the old soda fountain, and then I'm going to try to make one. So we will put about this much syrup in the container. So he's got cherry syrup in the glass. Then we want a little bit of vanilla ice cream to get that. And put it down in there. And kind of chop it up. Then Expert. Then we uh, do the fizz water. Fizz water. And if you're good, you'll run along the side and turn it. And we'll clean it off. And, and run it up. Then leave a little at the top so you get ice cream. And then to dip the ice cream, skim along on the top. He's skimming on the top. Roll across <laughs> so that you get a roll. So you have a nice roll. Perfect circle. Yeah, it did by the zipper. Okay, and then we pop it off if we want to. So is that just water? Carbonated it's water? Carbonated water. And then we add the straw. There you go. Pretty awesome. That is delicious. So I got my vessel here. I think I'm going to make a Coca. Get your spoon down the top. Got my spoon. I'm going to do Coca Cola. About that much? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, I think so. That's right. I'm not doing very good on my first day of work here. So I kind of make that paste. So he's not really a soda jerk, he's just kind of a jerk. That's true. <laughs> Busy water now? Busy water. Put it back. Right now. Well, you're not very good at this. What did I do? Oh, oh I didn't go around the edge. Go around. Well, you don't have to, but hmm. it's not the coat that doesn't stick. Huh. On some oh. Lynn enough. said I didn't have to go around, so right. hooks on you. <laughs> so one scoop. Two scoops. Two scoops. Around. And uh, dipping stains. 
Like, you gotta get a wide base. Lift with your legs, not yes. with your back. More soda water? Mm -hmm. Or more fizzy water? Fizzy water. Push back. Push back. It's so hot! <laughs> yeah. On yes. the end. On the end. You're gonna have to clean up after yourself. I right? know. Lynn's not here to clean up after you. I'm on probation already at Lynn's Soda Fountain in Brazil, Indiana. There's a little more art to it than you think. Sometimes. There is. Huh? Oh my god, it's so cherry. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, mine better. <laughs> well, that was a pretty incredible. Um, piece of Americana there, Aaron, at Lynn's Pharmacy. Yep, I loved it. It's gonna be hard to top. It will be. What a great guy Lynn was and his son, Robert, teaching us a little bit about the history of the pharmacy and the soda fountain. Yep. Aaron, here's the fountain I was telling you about that the country of Brazil gave the city of Brazil in 1954. It sends a token of friendship to her namesake, the city of Brazil. You were kidding. I don't kid. Thought he was lying. Beautiful. It is beautiful. It's bodies earned, not given. We're here at Northview High School, getting ready to check out the parking lot. Reese, what do you think about the condition of the parking lot here at Northview? Uh, it's not the best, if you ask me. It looks like some construction's going on, though. Do you think they're going to improve the parking lot a little bit? Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. You know, we got double bumpers there cracks in the asphalt. Lines need painted, but it does look like Northview is making some improvements to the school. I think they'll probably touch up the parking lot, contrary to Reese, Reese's belief. So Reese, you moved to Brazil about a year ago, right? Yeah. What do you like about Brazil? Um, I'd say I like the small town aspect of it. It's pretty nice. You get to know everybody. Um, second part is that the community is like well into sports, they're into it. They do like their sports here at Northview, I know that. Yeah, there were. that's probably my two favorite things here. Did you know I shattered a backboard in that high school my junior year? Nope. I did. I believe it. I did. I promise I did. It's true. Aaron, did we're you know in the 1920s, <laughs> Brazil was an economic boom town. The coal industry kind of put it on the map. And then in the 1920s, the brick industry was very strong in Brazil. They were producing they had 12 factories with each factory producing fifty to 60,000 bricks a day. I did not know that. Most of the cities and towns in Indiana that have brick roads at the time were used from Brazil brick. Are we on a brick road right now? We are not, <laughs> but <laughs> man. <laughs> we're here on Chestnut Street in Brazil, Indiana. Chestnut Street is the last street in Brazil to be paved totally in bricks. Aaron and I are here at the Sunrise Family Restaurant in Brazil. We're going to go check it out. We've heard good things about it. So we're at Sunrise Family Restaurant here in Brazil, Indiana. We're with Giggles, Sierra. <laughs> She's going to tell us a little bit about the menu and kind of what their specialties are. So what's good? What's good? What's your most ordered spread of tenderloins? Tenderloin? Are they huge? Our nachos, Sunrise nachos, huge. Lots to eat. Okay. I'm a chicken lover. We have the Hall of Fame burger. You get the Hall of Fame burger. You're a chicken lover. I am. Do you have chickens? Not what? anymore. Yeah. You didn't love them very much, <laughs> did you? Everything wants to eat chickens, okay? Okay. <laughs> Appreciate them. Our steaks are so good here. Okay. I think we have the best steaks in town. Thank you. 
man, this menu's like yes, 800 pages. There's a lot. Big, now, Aaron. You know how I like random stuff? Yep. I like making lists and yep. thinking about dumb stuff. <laughs> yes. You were on a deserted island, okay. and you could only have three albums for the rest of your life. Uh, what would you have? Do you have one already? Uh, yeah, kind of. Oh my gosh. I have to have a minute. I would go Neil Young. Everybody knows this is nowhere. Uh, okay. I would go Drive By Trucker Southern Rock Opera. And I would go Black Crows Shake Your Money Maker. You thought of this before. No, 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 no. I go Black Crows Southern Harmony. You've thought this through. I've I can made think this, of one. I've made this list in my sleep before. <laughs> Just in case. Same question. Okay. You get three movies for the rest of your life on the deserted island. What are they going to be? Green Mile. Okay. I've never seen Green Mile. I, I like Tom Hanks. He's a solid oh, honky. Oh, he's one of my favorite honkies. Uh -huh. Okay, big, Green Mile. Guy. Okay, what else? Yeah, big guy. He was married to Omarosa. I know. Weird. So weird. All right. Last question with the deserted island. Yeah. All right. So if you could, if you could eat one food the rest of your life on that deserted island, pizza. Pizza. Easy. Easy. I'm going chicken enchiladas. <laughs> I like chicken enchiladas. Oh, I like chicken dumpling soup. Well, there's giggles oh, or chicken dumpling soup. Oh my god. Chicken enchiladas. I'm not going to lie, this steak looks really good. I don't know why I lied. I don't know why it's saying steak. No, bad, no, there's no reason to lie. Look at that. That looks good. That's a good looking steak. It's a bunch of sides, too. I know it. Excited. What'd you get? Chicken fried chicken. Is that what they called it? I'm and going. Got, uh, I'm going home style dinner. And I got the bourbon steak. Oh. What? That steak is really, really good. Well, we're on our way to Orville Redenbacher's childhood home to pay homage to the King of Pop. <laughs> <laughs> here with uh, Orville Redenbacher's childhood home behind us, here to pay homage to the man himself, the Big Popper. Thanks for joining us today in Brazil, Indiana. Next stop, Batesville, Oldenburg. See you then.
We're here on Chestnut Street. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know you were starting. Ew. Oh, crappy. Okay. It is paved totally in bricks. Most of the other streets have been asphalted over by now. Asphalted over? Shit. Okay. Chestnut's the last street in Brazil to be totally paved in bricks. <laughs> paved in bricks. Take montage. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We're here on Chestnut Street in Brazil. Chestnut Street is the last street in Brazil to be paved in bricks.